and welcome to Off the Reservation, a show that's got all the meat, just like Arby's. I'm your number one wizard now. I'm L. And I'm the son of Picasso. <laughs> we got the meats. Got the meats. Uh, guys ever had the meat sweats? <laughs> the meat sweats? No. You know, it's like when you, you have so much meat and you just, you're so stuffed. Oh. You're just like, Ooh, it's getting hot in here. Get the meat sweats. <laughs> I've only heard the stories of it. I don't think I've ever experienced, <laughs> never it. experienced it. Well, you're lucky because it's not fun. And, <laughs> and I eat a lot of spam, dude. I'm telling you. Just I've had a lot of meat in my life. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, gosh. Yeah. Speaking of meat. Oh, my God, dude. Like, you talking about Arby's. Like, do you guys remember the Arby's in Big Montana? Is yeah, yeah, just, yeah. What, what? That was a long time ago. Yeah, like way a long time ago. Back Arby's, if you're listening, bring back the like Big that. Montana. Well, yeah. Wait, what was the Big Montana? It was like what it sounds like—a big ass Montana sandwich, man. It was just like a big ass, like like Arby sandwich. It, it was just it was a normal Arby sandwich with all like the meats and everything inside. Yeah, of it, but it was huge. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking like. And so, a like, baby's head size, you know what I mean? Like, like the size of a baby's head. Out here, when you say you're better, you better be able to back it up. This is Arby's new Big Montana. It's better than any quarter pound burger, and here's the backup it's twice as big a full half pound of beef, and not just your average beef. Arby's slow roasted beef. Add your choice of sauces bigger, better, tastier. No brag, just fat. When we say it's better out here, this is is what we need the biggest taste in fast food arby's new big montana so <laughs> my wife was pregnant with the kids right and like we had twins like and so there was only like so many foods that she wanted to eat and arby's was not on the menu so like after we had kids and the, the twins were born she's like what do you want to do and i was like i want arby's and she's like okay let's go so like we show up to arby's and like i'm all excited in the, in the drive through and the guy was like, can I take your order? And I was like, yeah, let me get a big Montana. And he's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, let me get a big Montana. And he's like, what are you talking about, dude? And like, I look at the menu and like, I'm like searching and like, they discontinued that sandwich. More importantly, <laughs> he like made me feel like I was crazy for asking it. Like, not like, hey, dude, we don't make it anymore or whatever. Yeah. He's like, what are you talking about, dude? So like, I totally felt like I was like Mandela affected. I felt like it was like. Like, was this something, like, a reminiscent from, like... It, did it legit look like that? Yeah, yes. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Just a half pound of roast yeah. beef. That's, yeah. that's and cardiac like, arrest right there. And I thought, I thought, like, was this from, like, the, like, like last timeline I was on? Like, where, what, what, what happened? And Dude, so, like, there I was, like, thinking that, like, I was just crazy. Yeah. And then, boom, I was watching um, Saving Silverman. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, right? Oh, yeah, With yeah. With Jack Black and... Um, Jason Zach. Biggs. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And literally, they talk about the Big Montana. And so I was oh, like, really? dang, dude, I'm not you're, crazy. You don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the Big Montana. The Big Montana. So you, you, you stepped away from Arby's for a bit, and you come back, and your favorite sandwich is just, just gone, dude. Gone. Yeah. Hey, well, that's what well, the... well, it probably happened when they, they like, hammered down on, like, fast food places for selling, like, oversized food. <laughs> Right, probably. that was like the super size me, like you that know, was probably like, in yeah, that the era where they started craze. like, like we gotta get rid of the super size, we gotta get rid of the Wendy's biggie like size. Oh, like we had like a plan. We were like, we're gonna get the big Montana, <laughs> some like fries. We like split it up, like you know what I mean. Like it was just we had a plan, and then the guy was like, "What are you talking about, dude? We don't do anything like that." You know, can you just give me a half pound of roast beef <laughs> and a regular sandwich, and I'll I'll make make my own. <laughs> Well, I'm telling yeah. you, dude, like that's what they're doing nowadays with the the they're sw do, pulling the old switcheroo with our meats now. Yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, mm. so so I don't know G if you give guys us, uh, give us the overview. What's happening? What's happening in the meat industry these days well, now? So like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> insider information here. Uh, so um, yeah, the other day, like, so I, I was listening to the news, which ew, I was surprised that it like came over. Like through all the Fourth of July festivities and things going on, uh, but yeah, they, I heard that uh, they were starting to do cultivated meat or cultured meat. Cultured meat. And yeah, I was like, what? Is, what the heck is cultured meat? And they're mm -hmm. like, it's lab grown meat. Oh, so it isn't referring to meat that is, you know, just you know, watching have, operas. Have, have, yeah, watching operas been been around the world. Like, a few. 
<laughs> knows a little bit of this that. <laughs> Seen Phantom a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Has season tickets to Broadway, you know? Yeah. Not, not oh. that kind. Okay, well, not see, that and, cultured. And so, like, you think of, like, like that's what I'm saying. It's like, you think of, like, like Wagyu beef, you know, mm-hmm. the, this kind of, like, fancy fancy meats. Oh, yeah, yeah. It sounds like fancy meats, but it's actually lab-grown beef. And, you know, like, I'm still trying to get over when they, like, approved to start using horse meat in, uh, in New Mexico. But, I mean, now they're, like trying to grow meat we're eating horse meat in new mexico uh yeah you can buy it oh wow yeah i, I don't I know where it I was think... like 2016 they decided to do hor- uh, horse meat ah okay okay i think that was the <laughs> <laughs> well and that's <Gallop> ceremonials <laughs> <laughs> well that's the crazy thing so like like that, that make brings me to my like the, the uh, it brought me to this thought so like you remember when we had dave on and dave was telling us about how uh he had gone um to europe and and everything and mm-hmm. they had um uh oh they were different yeah, restaurants yeah he that, ate horse he yeah ate he horse, had horse. And, and how like i'm the, so hungry i could eat a horse <laughs> <laughs> but they had uh they had to advertise that they sold horse meat and i was like i mean like i feel like that's something like you know are we gonna start doing that like yeah. if you, are you gonna have like a completely cultured meat a uh, restaurant, you know what I mean, and it's yeah. this crazy idea of like being able to grow it. Um, so they're growing, they're growing meat in a lab, right? Yeah, 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 and um, like in in giant vats and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, well, well, we we got this we'll, video. We'll check it out. Um, but yeah, and so actually, it all kind of started in the early two thousands with Jason Mathis. So like Mathis. the tech's been around for a minute. It's yeah. not just like oh, like just last week we just discovered how to grow this shit. Yeah, they've, yeah. they've been working on it for a decade now, over a decade. Yeah, and then around 2013, uh, some dude, he ended up creating a hamburger patty out of tissue that was grown outside of an animal. That's what it, that's what Ooh, it says. Yeah. And so it's like this crazy concept of like trying to move away from like having to, um, you know, butcher and, and kill animals. Yeah, well, so let's think that. about this, right? Probably one of the big things that they're trying to push is that like, yeah, it, you're saving the environment, you know, yeah, by not having to process all of this animals in like and these, store the animals and and all yeah. the byproducts mm-hmm. of like you know the waste animal waste, mm-hmm. you know, on, on top of all that, like not killing the animals, right? Like yeah, that's those are probably the biggest like, I oh hey, know. this is what's happening, right? But I mean, it makes <clears> me think of like that uh, Soylent Green movie back in uh, what was it like? Tw- uh, 1973 1973 Soylent Green and the main tagline was like Soylent Green is people you know what I mean like how close are we to starting to have you know people and I'm food we probably already do that's what the FDA does (laughs) well Well, yeah that's the whole thing with the FDA is the FDA uh, tracks how much uh, stuff is in our food so like our beef can only have a small percentage of of insect. Yeah, do you remember that scene? Oh, that. did either one of you watch Breaking Bad? Do you remember that scene? Uh, uh, there's a there's this the episode where there's a fly in the in the laboratory, and like the uh, Walter White gets obsessed. Like he's like this fly is a contamination, and we can't <laughs> have it in the lab, you know. And he's like hell bent on stopping everything until they get this fly out. And it's like a psychological thing more more so than it is about the fly. But like uh, the other characters, like yeah, well, you know, like the FDA, like allows a certain percentage of like rat poop inside like our food. Yeah, he's like, there's like an acceptable level yeah. that's like allowed, and and I was thinking about that, like as you just said that, I was like, yeah, that, well, that's true. Like there's like, you know, like food being created on like mass production. There's no way they're gonna keep it all. Yeah. Well, well, that's like the jungle, dude. The the book, the jungle. Uh, not the Jungle Book. Oh, but okay. <laughs> the book, uh, the Jungle by uh, Upton Sinclair. Uh, in 1905, he had gone in and taken a look in Chicago, their oh, meatpacking yeah. facilities, and he basically exposed all the crazy stuff that was happening from Ooh. like, like people losing fingers, and then it's still running through the process. Oh, how many fingers do you think you've had in your lifetime? Uh, probably more than I've probably willing to share. <laughs> more than I care to admit. <laughs> oh, it's like man. spiders, man. Oh, yeah, it's like the spiders you eat at night, they say. Yeah. They just crawl right into your mouth, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
All right, should we watch this video real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at this. Let's see. Let's let's see what. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Meat footage. Look at how a new way to grow the meat we eat That's could make a big impact on the environment. Don't, don't talk about it like that now. Americans estimated 75 billion pounds of red meat and chicken last year. But what if some of that meat was not raised on farms but in high-tech facilities? Scientists say it could mean fewer greenhouse gas emissions and just a fraction of the land and water used. Right. Dwyer, so they're like, this is the benefits, y'all. Save the environment. This is what you call a slaughterless house. Oh yes. Yeah. The equipment. That's looks just a like regular a house. Brewery, <laughs> but it's not. Beer that's a normal making. house. So that's where it all starts. Just a few cells. It's meat. So you're making meat, meat in here. Yes. But I don't see any animals and I don't see any animal parts. <laughs> well, that's the trick, right? Dun, dun, Stainless dun. steel bioreactors <laughs> or cultivators produce real meat from animal stem cells. You're making chicken in there. Yeah. So if you look at this, this is a approximately a 200 plus liter tank. And we take cells from a chicken or an egg. Dr. Uma Valetti is a cardiologist who founded Upside Foods. Taking on a what food I read chain is all about that was it, it takes two weeks they to said that they're using chicken, um, cancerous a chickens or a hundred thousand stem cells. So you're saying in this factory, there's something about the cancerous stem cells that allow them to produce, cleaner, like reproduce in the petri dish. Well, mm. Ultimately, yes. I mean, who's to say it's true? Or not, but it, once I heard that, I was like, it does kind of make sense. A mixture of vitamins, fats, sugars, and oxygen in tanks growing into tissues of chicken. Is it safe? Absolutely. The best indication for this is. Two months ago, we are the first company in the world <laughs> to get FDA green light to bring cultivated chicken to the market. For decades, scientists have pursued growing meat from cells as a way to protect animals and feed a booming global population. The demand for meat is continuing to grow and double and double, and we just don't have enough resources nor ability to continue Dude, to grow that man. much meat. Dude, that makes me think of, uh, that makes me think of, uh, Fifth Element. Like, I mean, we live in the Southwest, right? Like, they talk about, like, overpopulation. Like, there's so much space. I just, I don't, you, like. Yeah, but, like, You, like, get in the plane and you leave Albuquerque and you're over, like, just empty desert for miles and miles and miles. Yeah, yeah. And see, I, 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 I'm still on the fence of how I feel about this whole idea of, like, cu- cultured meat, you know, growing your own meat. I mean, like, would it be possible in the future to be able to set up a situation in which you could grow your own meat from home? You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, versus having to... See, I... I Like, you're you're thinking of it from the aspect of, like, this is good for mankind. I view it as, like, they're looking to make patents and to make a ton of money off of this well, so yeah. they have proprietary information and they're able to just like start 3d printing this shit you know mm. and it, that's how i see it and so it gets their margins lower and they're able to charge us the same price or you know glue it in with real meat and you're getting like a mix now of you're getting 50 50 yeah yeah <clears throat> Which, if, and, if you think about it, like the the meat, um, well, the meat industry in in America is like one of the largest things going on at the moment. Like between uh, meat and uh, entertainment, meat is like our biggest thing because we spend so much money uh, housing animals, doing taking care of things like that. And there are like bad benefits, uh, bad side effects to that industry which has been a big problem um you know having the algae blooms having like what do we do with all the expired milk that doesn't get it consumed see i i think that more so they're throwing money at it than actually fix, fixing the system oh yeah like there's no reason why these animals should be abused before they're fed to us do you know what i mean like there's no reason why these mass chicken farms should be operating the way they're doing like the these places used to be owned by mom and pop farmers do you know what i mean and it like we blindly believe this idea that it's still happening like there's mom and pop farmers and there's not like there's these big cash companies that are basically have a monopoly for the entire industry yeah and if you were if you yourself wanted to go start selling beef like you you wouldn't even be able to buy into the industry without taking out loans because it's so it's a big beef big oil 
Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, these 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 corporate fat cats are root now. <laughs> um, no, I I see what you're saying. Um, I see where you're coming from. As it's it it's, I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Like any company, any startup, their whole goal is to make money, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, it's almost like let's not. While yes, they can have some virtuous, um, you know, goals mm -hmm. in there. Like ultimately, at the end of the day, the people who are putting their money down. They want to make money back. They want to make it back and they want to make it hand over fist, you know? Yeah. So it's almost like, okay, are they trying to get it to the point where it's like, hey, we can all win. We can save the environment and make some money. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, someone's getting duped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So is it going to be us? You know what I mean? I, um, and like, who's to say, like, I'm not a scientist. I don't know what they're doing. You know what I mean? And like, that's the weird <laughs> part. It's like, now, granted, like, I don't know what they've been doing to meet now anyways you know what i mean what you like, been doing to that meat <laughs> <laughs> so i i don't know what they're doing to meat now nowadays yeah. you know like you you were telling us about um the, um, the meat glue yeah yeah, yeah, they're, yeah they're putting enzymes using enzymes putting to, scraps together yeah right? and then sell <clears throat> it to us at a premium yeah and uh, it makes you think about what is that those enzymes those man-made enzymes do to your body over a lifetime yeah you know it's it's <laughs> Um, well, so, so at the same time, like, like thinking about that, like some of the evidence that like I've seen is, um, I don't know about you guys, but lately I've been having a hard time, harder time digesting, uh, beef. And we had, I had spent some time talking to, uh, our friend Dave and Dave was telling me he, he can't eat meat, hmm. but what he has done in the past is he's gone back to the reservation and uh, met somebody with sheep or or some kind of livestock and has gone in with somebody and uh, gone in with some of his family members and purchased one cow to be butchered and took that meat mm -hmm. and he was like you know having a steak that like i know was raised by like an actual farmer who did all this stuff you yeah. know yeah. took care of it uh he goes you know that's meat settles in my stomach a lot better Farm to table wi-fi <laughs> yeah. yeah and it, it's it, he was like you know it, it's better it feels better my body doesn't have as hard of a time breaking it down that kind of a thing and it makes me think like can this technology be transferred over to the reservation do we want it to be transferred over to the reservation do we want our natives to like because we have land like, yeah. do we want to I, get into the game? I am, I don't know. See, I almost think that, like, because there's those people that, like, want to do, like, clean living. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. they're the guys that go back out and go off grid and be have their make their own resources. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they, they get their electricity from, like, a hydro... Hydro like, or uh, solar panel. Kind yeah, of level you know, thing. and they grow their own food. They grow and their own vegetables. That, I watched a video the other day where there's mm. these trees that give an electrical charge, and these people were charging their cell phones what? Off, of, off of these trees. Yeah, I, I heard, heard about that. Trees. Yeah, I'm not. I, I like. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Literally, they've been known to like have the highest conduction of electricity, and we're talking volts, not just a little trickle charge. Like, so people have their their brick plugged into the base of the tree <laughs> yeah here we go crazy like, man. yeah and like so, maple syrup <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you got your maple syrup tap and then and below you're charging your phone <laughs> you know it, you think about the idea of these big industries and they're like man they just got su like we're we're suckers and consumers and like, yeah well so and then so the, like let's bring this back let's bring this back to the uh, indigenous side of us right mm -hmm. like like you mentioned like we have land, you know what I mean, back in, uh, not us personally, I, no, I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> but, you know, our reservations, we have land, you know what I mean? At what point do we start to look out for the health and safety of our own people and invest back into having, mm -hmm. you know, the right resources, you know what I'm saying? In that sense, like, yeah. man, do we need to pay farmers, you know what I mean, to make yeah. sure that we're producing the meat and 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 food correctly you know what i mean yeah um 
Because I think there is truth to Dave's story about like, you know, like not being able to eat these processed meats these days. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, like there's some, you're for sure. Like there's no way they're, they're shipping like meat across the country without and, some sort of chemical, you know? Not just that you look back at like these, like, mm -hmm. like we just talked about Arby's, right? Like how were they able to make profit margin off of giving that much meat yeah. on a sandwich? <laughs> yeah. Like, is it really real? Yeah. You know Arby's, what I mean? Like, we want answers. Arby's. We want <laughs> Or didn't we, didn't we want to be sponsored by them earlier? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, how? There's no other way, right? Other than, like, they're, uh, uh, like the guy said, that's the trick, you know? So <laughs> the trick, it, man. when we were getting or were talking about this topic, it took me back to a conversation that I had with Russell Means. And one thing he told me was that the Native American community is, like, a testing ground for the federal government and how... Mm -hmm they can manipulate the population. And if you look at how they were able to conquer all of the Plains tribes, they messed with our meat supply. Yeah. They were able to manipulate it to a point to where we were dependent on government rations, right? Yeah. So it's you, you see things play out and you you can look at, okay, if this plays out, then this will play out, then this will play out, then this will play out. You know, at a certain point, people are going to stop farming and stop raising cows because it's gonna it's gonna be too expensive to get into it yeah and that's that's where they're headed to and if you look at the other thing they're talking about these 15 minute cities it it's i see it as a way to rein in the white the populace man. the the population that's dominant right now and that's the white population and i feel that the way that the government can I guess manipulate the white population is with the idea of convenience of saving the environment. Like, like I mean, it sounds funny. Well, but it's like who doesn't want to save the environment? Yeah, you know? and so like, how do we manipulate yeah, you at these at, at at manipulate you with that? Yeah, that Get your electric cars. Yeah, you know, but you got to plug into but, one of our charging stations. But you're you're you locked into just fifteen mines. minutes, yeah. right? Well, like you think about like the res, like it takes you about 15 minutes to get across the entire thing, right? Yeah. Like it's just, it's, it's really crazy to think about like how things are being bought and, or spun to us and repackaged. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess my message is just be wary people. Yeah. Look, look at, look at the buzzwords and how they're trying to sell you yeah. these things. Yeah. Don't just buy it off face value. Because you know? everything's marketing. Yeah. 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 Um, Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, <laughs> remember everyone, we got our uh, shirt shop, shirt shack. Yeah. Um, we also went on a little bit of a hiatus here. We yeah. we, we had a few weeks off. Uh, uh, we've been away for a little bit while. Uh, some stuff going on in the life, but uh, we're excited to uh, keep bringing you guys content. So, yeah. Yeah, we brought the meats. Yeah. <laughs> and the meat sweats. <laughs> It's a little sweaty here. <laughs> it is the middle of the summer, dude. That that meat's gonna sweat. My uh, I, I forget how the how I forget how the story goes. I had a, uh, with my niece. Um, I forget what it was. I think we were bringing. I don't. I don't remember. I remember how it is. But we got we got around to this joke where. <laughs> Where, where I'm going to be known as Uncle Arby's for some reason <laughs> because <laughs> I've always got the meats or something. I don't know. Uh, but this is Uncle Arby's signing out. <laughs> Uncle Arby's yeah. signing out. All right. Uh, cool. <laughs>